before we throw the floor open for the open question session, I would like to inform our Muslim brothers and sisters in France particularly that we are with you in solidarity. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you steadfastness, to give you patience and we are totally against what's happening in France for the last one month. And we know that on the 2nd of October, the president of France, Emmanuel Macron said that Islam is in crisis all over the world. And if you go a few days before, there was a trial that's taking place for the killing that took place in 2015 for the Charlie Hebdo staff that were killed by some of the terrorists. And when the trial was taking place in the month of September, Charlie Hebdo again, they published the caricature of the prophet, belittling him, demeaning him, and that's nothing but blasphemy. Because of which, on the 25th of September, there was a Muslim who used a cleaver or a chopper and he attacked two of the staff members of Charlie Hebdo. After which, one week later, on the 2nd of October, the President of France, Emmanuel Macron, he gave a speech on how to control radicalism and he went on to say in that speech openly that Islam is in crisis all over the world. And he went on to say that it is wrong to portray your religious feeling in public. France believes in freedom of speech. France believes in human rights. We have no problem with someone following certain religion. But to outwardly portray your religiosity in public is not accepted in France. Wearing hijab in public is not accepted. And he went on belittling Islam and speaking against the Prophet for which the Muslims condemned his speech in different parts of the world. It is uncalled for that head of state, if there is a problem, rather than solving the problem, he is adding fuel to the fire. If someone is blaspheming or speaking against the prophet of any religion, demeaning him, making caricatures, instead of saying that this should not be done, he said this is allowed in the freedom of speech. Blasphemy is allowed. And he went on to add fuel to the fire. So much so that there was a teacher who had a session with the students in the class of tolerance and circulated the caricature of the Prophet, Billah, and had a debate because of which that became viral, what the teacher did. And in retaliation to this, there was a Chechen immigrant on the 16th of October who took a hatchet and he beheaded that teacher, Samuel Patti, because of which that became world news everywhere. As far as the act of that Muslim beheading the teacher in France, this is not what Islam says. In Islam, there are some rules and regulations and this should be followed in a country which follows the Islamic Sharia, not in a country which is not following the Islamic Sharia. A person cannot get up in the morning and take the law in his hand or go and behead someone and this act is not condoned by me at all. And there were many Muslims throughout the world who have condemned this act. But the point to be noted that if one Muslim out of the millions of Muslims makes a mistake, that does not mean that you demean the full community, that you speak against the full community, that you speak against the religion, that you speak against the prophet of Islam. What the person did is to be condemned. He made a mistake. But you cannot go on criticizing the religion of Islam, criticizing the prophet, and going out of the way and saying that we will make these caricatures public, giving in the media, and you could see that big buildings were hired and paid ads 
were given so that the caricature of the prophet was portrayed on torn buildings as advertisements. This is uncalled for. It hurts us and we Muslims, we condemn this act of France, especially the head of the country, the president of France, Macron, we condemn it. He's talking about human values, talking about freedom of speech. He should be the last person knowing what France has done in the colonial rule. If you read the history of France, the France had many colonies, including Algeria. And we know that France ruled Algeria for more than 100 years. For 132 years, the France ruled Algeria, right from 1830 to 1962. And according to historical records, there were 875,000 Algerians killed by France. Some records say up to 1 million. And when you talk about freedom of speech, at that time in Algeria, when anyone spoke against the French government or against the French, they were executed. They were killed. This is history. They went to colonize many countries, including Morocco, including Tunisia, and saying that we want to uplift the civilization. We want to civilize these countries. What they actually did was converted them into slaves. And this is what has been done by many of the Western countries. We have the example of UK. They colonized many countries in the world, including India, where I come from. The whole of the Indian subcontinent was colonized by them. They started the East India Company in the name of business. They came and they ruled. They looted the country. They plundered the country. The GDP was at the lowest. India, which was one of the richest countries in the world, one of the most powerful countries in the world, they looted it completely. And in their history, they say that they wanted to uplift India. Same thing with the France. Imagine they made colonies in Algeria and concentration camps much before what Hitler made in Germany. And they are talking about human rights to us. It's a shame that the France president doesn't know the history of France just a couple of hundred years ago. What did they do? And what Muslims do you have today? According to the PEW report in 2017, there were 8.8 percent Muslims who were French citizens. 5.75 million Muslims lived in France. And now it's approximately close to 6 million Muslims are in France. More than 9 percent of the French population are Muslims. And who are these Muslims? These Muslims were brought from Algeria, from Morocco, from Tunisia, into France for labor. Many of them were brought as slaves. And the Muslims today, most of them, they are third generation, fourth generation, fifth generation, born in France. And the French government is treating them like third class citizens. They have the same passport, talking about advanced country, talking about freedom of speech, but they're treated as third class citizens. And they have made ghettos of them. So when they don't get the equal rights, there's bound to be retaliation. And what you see what's happening, it is unheard of. And in retaliation, there are so many cases that is happening in the world. One Muslim does an act which we know it is wrong. It comes out in the media as though all Muslims are like that. There are so many such cases happening in the world which go unreported. We know of the case that in Toronto, a Muslim, after offering a salah, was there in the car park. A white supremacist comes and slits its throat and the media doesn't report. We come to know from the small media, social media. It's not news at all. There are several such cases. If you see all over the attacks, the terrorist attacks and all the killing that is going on, it is much more done by non-Muslim. And I've given the talk in 2006 on the topic, is terrorism a Muslim monopoly? And I went on 100 to 150 years back that who were the first terrorists? Who were the first person who did the hijacking of the plane? Who were the people who did the first assassination? And when you read history, 
almost all of them were non-Muslims. It's recently that we find that the media are picking up the black sheep of the Muslim community and they're portraying as though they're exemplary Muslims. And what happens? Two days later, after this teacher was beheaded, on the 18th of October, just below a field tower, two Muslim ladies who were wearing hijab, they were attacked by a French woman and stabbed multiple times. One Muslim lady, she was 40 years old, the other was 19 years old, and there was multiple stab injuries, so much so that both were admitted to the hospital. And the elder lady was there in the hospital with multiple wounds to her lung. And even the younger lady of 19 years old, she had multiple stab injuries. And this was actually not reported. Later on, when the video became very popular, and was circulated on the social media, then the police later on goes and arrests the French woman. Isn't this double standards? France claiming to be a very advanced country, claiming to be a country which has human rights, they have double standards. Imagine when 9 to 10 percent of the population of France, they are Muslims. Instead of taking care instead of living harmoniously, they go out of the way to say that the head scarf will be banned, the naqab will be banned, showing signs of religiosity ban. And what do they do? They go and openly, they say that we are going to make these caricatures of the Prophet Naus Billah public. And anyone who objected to this, it was a crime. And they went and closed down more than 70 mosques. In the last week, the French government, all those who objected that making a public display of the Prophet's caricature, demeaning him, insulting the Prophet, making derogatory statement against him. When they objected, they were arrested. Imagine more than 70 mosques were closed. Not only are they doing blasphemy, but anyone who objects that they consider is not freedom of speech, that they consider as crime. Isn't it the double standard? It is nothing but thuggery. That just because they are in majority, 90% of them, they are subduing and they are oppressing the minority. Is this freedom of speech? We condemn the act of the France government, of the French people, especially the president, Emmanuel Macron and when he said that Islam is in crisis all over the world he got it wrong actually Islam is the solution for the crisis all over the world and I've given a talk on Islam the solution to the problem of humanity and that will reply to all his questions what we have to realize as Muslims that we have to be steadfast we have to be patient May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us sabr. Whatever these people do, they're trying to instigate us. They want more such cases to happen. Someone comes out of the blue and beheads someone so that they can attack us more fiercely. They can bring laws against us. These things are happening all over the world. And they are done by the non-Muslims in a greater number than by the Muslims. We are black sheep in the community. But what we fail to realize that what the non-Muslims are doing, it is not portrayed in the media. But what the Muslims do, they pick up the black sheep of the community and they portray as though we are exemplary Muslims. I especially condemn what's happening in France and I condemn also the statements made by the President of France, Emmanuel Macron, and I would like to say that Islam is the solution for the crisis all over the world. And we as Muslims, regarding what should be done in instances like Charlie Hebdo, had given the reply when it happened in 2015. You can go on the YouTube and see my reply. It's a long reply. Regarding how to reply to statements like that of the French president, you can refer to my video cassette, is terrorism a Muslim monopoly? When they said that 
every Muslim is not a terrorist, but every terrorist is a Muslim. How to reply? You hear my video cassette, it's for about three hours. And we Muslims, what we should do? Whatever we can. But natural number one, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He grant us the sabr. And we pray to Allah that throughout the world we find the Muslims are being oppressed. We find it in China where we have the Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang, they put in concentration camps, one to two million. We have seen the cases in Myanmar, the Rohingyas, in the Rakhine state where they were persecuted. And we have this example that in China, they are not allowed to read the Quran, they are not allowed to pray, they are forced to have alcohol, they aren't allowed to fast in the month of Ramadan. This is nothing but oppression. What we have in Myanmar, that we have millions of Muslims who were made to leave the country and they are staying as refugees in other countries. Many of them were killed, many were murdered. Then we have Muslims in Palestine where we find that the Israelis are doing operation against the Muslims. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Muslims in Yemen, for the Muslims in Syria, for the Muslims in Afghanistan, for the Muslims in Kashmir that are being oppressed by the Indian government that have been persecuted by the Indian government. We have Muslims in India as a whole, that in many parts of India they have been persecuted. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the list is wrong. It's difficult to name all the Muslims that have been persecuted. What we have to do is that we have to be steadfast on our deen. We have to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be steadfast on our deen and see to it that whatever we can do in our limited capacity. And today, the whole world is a global village. Previously, to make our voice reach throughout the world was very difficult. Unless you owned the media, or you had a satellite, or a newspaper, or a magazine. But today, the world has become a global village. Everyone, they have access to the social media. What we have to do is we have to portray our views and condemn what's happening, whether it be on the YouTube, whether it be on the Facebook, whether it be on the Instagram, whether it be on the Twitter. And in such situation that we know at the time of the Prophet, there were times when the Quraysh, they abused the Prophet, they criticized him. We have the example of Abu Lahab, what he did to the Prophet. At that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reveals Surah al qawsar the surah I started today's session with, surah number 108, where Allah says, Inna That we have granted thee the fount of abundance. So turn to thy Lord in prayer and sacrifice. And anyone who hated thee, he will be cut off from all future hope. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising inna a'tayna kal kawthar that we have granted thee the fount of abundance. Imagine the Lord of mankind is telling to a beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we have granted you the fount of abundance. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is saying and in Jannah there is a fountain or river by the name of Kawthar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising our Prophet. Now imagine the Lord of mankind is praising the Prophet. So however much the unbelievers, the kafir, however much the non-Muslims, they believe in the Prophet. When the Lord of mankind himself is praising, that is more than sufficient. We as Muslims, we are hurt, we feel bad, we get angry, but we should see to that we should not break the Sharia. We should object to what's happening. And we know that then Allah continues and says, Inna atayna kal kawthar, fasalli li rabbika wanhar. Turn to thy Lord in prayer and sacrifice. Allah tells to the Prophet, turn to thy Lord in prayer and sacrifice. And the last verse, Inna shaniya khawal aqtar. That anyone who hated thee, anyone who hated the Prophet, he will be cut off from all future hope. And you know what happened to the Quraysh. You know what happened to Abu Lahab, it's there in the Syria. So all these Western countries, whether it be France, 
whether it be other countries, whether it be European countries, however much they hate the Prophet, Allah promises that he will cut them out from all future rope. And we have the example, the moment the French president said that Islam is in crisis all over the world, a few days later, one of the French aid workers by the name of Sophie Petronin, she was released after being taken hostage. In December 2016, some of the jihadists in Mali, where she was working as an aid worker amongst the orphans to remove malnutrition, where she was working in December 2016, she was taken as hostage by some of the Muslim jihadis. And she was kept as a prisoner for four years. And recently, she was the last French hostage all over the world who was released by these Mali jihadists. So when she was released just a couple of weeks back, when she came in the plane, the French president himself went to the airport to receive her. And Sophie Pretenin, she was kept as a hostage for four years. When she came down from the stairs of the plane, the French president, he greeted her. And when she came down, you could see her wearing the scarf. And she said that I am not Sophie, I am Maryam. Alhamdulillah. She had accepted Islam. Imagine when the people tried to find out that did they ill treat you, how are they? She had kind words for those people who were taking her hostage. And she said that what they are doing is for their freedom. And she respected them so much so that she accepted Islam. And it was a shock for the president of France. He goes to receive her and then he finds out that she has accepted Islam. He hurriedly sees to it that you know everything is you know, hushed up. This is Allah's planning. They plan and plot Allah to plan. Allah is the best of planners. Allah says in Surah Imran chapter number 3 verse number 54, Allah khairul maqin. They plan and plotted Allah to plan. Allah is the best of planners. Here you find that the president of France was criticizing Islam and he goes to receive the lady who was freed after four years and he gets the shock of his life that she accepted Islam. And this reminds me of Yohan Redley who was another white journalist from UK who was taken as a hostage by the Taliban in Afghanistan. And when she was released, she openly praised the Taliban. And the Taliban only requested her when they released her, that you promise us that you'll read the Quran. And when she came back, she read the Quran and Alhamdulillah, she accepts Islam. So here we find that Islam is the religion of humanity. It is a religion of peace. Why should someone who's been taken as hostage, kept in captivity for four years, accept Islam? Because she found out the true values of Islam. And she realized that what is portrayed in the media is not what true Islam is. And inshallah one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also open up the eyes of Emmanuel Macron. And show him that Islam is the religion which has the solution for the problems of humanity. Islam is not in crisis all over the world. Islam has the solution for the crisis all over the world.